Mickey Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. morning. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, Ricky Smiley and the Ricky Smiley family. Good morning and happy Good Friday. Happy Good Friday. Today's song, of course, is Blessed Be the Name. And listen, Ricky, in light of the fact that it's Good Friday, I simply want to say Blessed Be the Name reminds us on Good Friday that there is good in this Friday and that God is able in situations that are most tragic to bring a treasure out of it. I like that right there because Good Friday, of course, we're reminded reminded that Jesus was lynched on a cross by the powers of the Roman Empire. It looked like the empire had the last word, but here it is. In the midst of that Good Friday tragedy was the treasure of our redemption, salvation, and, and the evidence of God's love for us. Listen, the word is that even in the midst of the worst, God somehow brings out the best. Yes, the worst that you go through does not have the last word word on you, but God is able to bring something good out of it while at the same time giving you the strength to get through it and then heal from it so that the best is yet to come in spite of the worst that you've been through. That's the word I'm simply depositing in everyone's spirit today. For some, it's been a rough year, a painful year. Already, we've experienced loss. Already, we've seen tragedy but check out tragedy does not have the last word that's what good friday says tragedy can't have the last word because god gets in the midst of the worst gets in the midst of what's tragic and somehow snatches something positive and healing out of it so the bible says he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him but with his stripes, we are healed. So please go ahead, live in the power of Good Friday, knowing there is treasure that God can snatch out of tragedy. And Good Friday turns good because God can take what appears to be the worst and somehow bring the best out of it. God bless you. Have an amazing weekend knowing that God has the last word. There it is, Pastor Haynes, man, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church. Let's get into this music. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Yes, Love you, Ricky. Have a great day. Yes, sir. You too. Let's go. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, 14 minutes after the hour, y'all got your front page right here. Maria is out sitting in. Special K. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, everybody. And these are your headlines uh, today from NewsOne.com. The cost to afford a median-priced home has increased at twice the rate that the average household income has risen as inflation and high interest rates inflame housing expenses. According to Redfin, the median monthly home payment in February was $2,838, up 12% year-over-year, while the median household income was just 84000 and seventy-two dollars, an increase of six percent over the last year. Home prices alone have risen far higher than the rate of general inflation. In other news, former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura is launching his own brand of cannabis edibles in partnership with Retro Bakery and producing hemp-derived THC edibles under the Jesse Ventura Farms brand. Ventura said the drug helped his wife get her seizures under control. And marine experts are warning beachgoers to avoid a creepy-looking, stinging creature following a string of sightings in Texas. Experts have had several reports of eyeball-looking creatures being found along the waterline on Mustang Island. That's a barrier island on the state's right. Gulf Coast. You know they Governor Hot Wheels? Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they got sea monsters in Texas. All right. Did you say eyeball? <laughs> yeah, it's they call it the uh, eyeball-looking creature. And uh, pictures show oh one God. of the scientists holding one of the freaky flotsam, which indeed resembles a disembodied eyeball. Okay, yeah, that's, that's enough great. to keep oh me out of the water. 
Uh, let's yeah. see. Mm-hmm. Spaghetti Monsters, they call it, it features an eye that is a <laughs> gas-filled float. And they're organisms, organisms known as rifle. Okay, I'm not even going to try that. Or thread <laughs> jellies. <laughs> Right. They're not true jellyfish, but rather a uh, siphonophere for a colony of animals living as one. Okay. And they do Appreciate that. No a I know. Like a sports. Yeah. yeah. How about <laughs> that? What's that, Rock D? What up, dog? Uh-huh. <laughs> March Madness. <laughs> Man, yeah. Sweet 16. You get bit. You get Tipped bit. off yesterday. Oh. Alabama pulls off the upset, Rick, over the number one seed, North Carolina. Man, Crimson Tide came to play. They advanced to the Elite Eight. UConn beat San, uh, San Diego State by three points. I'm sorry, about 30 points to advance. Let me tell you why UConn is excited. Because Vanessa Bryant uh, surprised the entire UConn men's basketball team with the new Kobe sneakers. These are the Italian camo sneakers that everybody's been waiting to get to hit on the Uh market so they surprised the entire UConn team with them and they went out there and dropped 30 uh, beat beat San Diego State by 30 (laughs) points in them doggone bad boys so it is what it is Uh, Philadelphia 76ers Kelly Aubrey Jr. got heated and called all the referees a bunch of bees the other day he was going in to try to win the game and uh, he thought he was fouled he wasn't fouled and referee didn't call it he went over there and said you would be you would be you would be and you would be (laughs) He had to apologize for it, but I'm sure he's going to get fined about $25,000. It is what it is. The women tip off their Sweet 16 round this, this uh, today. I'm excited about it. We'll talk about that later on in my next sports report. Brett, what you got coming up next? Oh, coming up next in the hot spot, Kanye West claims that he outwrapped Drake and Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to tell you all about it up next. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. So hot and this hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the Biara 18. <laughs> Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Euphoria Season 3 starring Zendaya has been delayed at HBO, but the network remains committed to producing new episodes. The delay is attributed to ongoing script writing, and the cast has been given the green light to pursue other opportunities in the meantime. Meanwhile, y'all, Drake hopped on his Instagram page to unleash a cryptic post about his rivals. He captioned his upload... They'd rather go to war with me than admit they are down and they are my worst enemy. So the post comes after Future and Metro Boomin released their joint album, We Don't Trust You, which features a diss from Kendrick Lamar towards both J. Cole and Drake. Now, during a recent It's All the Blur Biggest What tour at the stop in Florida, Drake said, a lot of people ask me how I'm feeling. I'm going to let you know how I'm feeling. Listen to the way I'm feeling. It's the same way I want you to walk out of here feeling tonight about yourself because I got my head up high, my back straight, and I'm ten toes down. He added, I know that no matter what, it's not about another on this earth that could ever mess with me in my life. Okay, Drake, okay. Oh, y'all, moving on to this crazy madness. Here we go with this 50 Cent stuff and, and P- Diddy and Puff and Puffa Diddy and Papa Diddy. Um, Stevie J has threatened to beat up 50 Cent, y'all, over mocking Sean Diddy Combs. The producer took the Instagram to call out 50 for his constant jokes following Diddy's Miami and Los Angeles homes being raided in sex trafficking investigations. Um, Stevie suggested 50 is bitter at his ex, Daphne Joy, who went on to date Diddy. He also insinuates that 50 is in hoots with producer Lil Rod who filed a sexual assault lawsuit against Puffy in February. Now Stevie J says that Curtis what's good? He said what's good man cause you and your feelings about Daphne cause she with ganging them was it that you just messing with Lil Rod? However it go I want to shoot the fade since it's entertainment. Let me beat the crap out of you on TV or something. I'm calling you out Curtis what you want to do Curtis? Oh, oh lord. That ain't gonna happen. All of them in their 50s. Yeah, exactly. Who trying to fight Absolutely. in their 50s? Mike Tyson. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> good answer. He's 57. It's the first time in my life I've seen everybody in their 50s got a problem with somebody. Man, man, people in their And 50s, everybody want to fight. Yeah. I don't. That's the time to chill. Me neither. I don't. Me neither. Man, please. We're supposed to be laid back on a boat somewhere chilling. This is, you know, we're supposed to be enjoying our life at this point, not still mm-hmm. doing like grade school For stuff. Real. Come on, man. Embarrassing. This is crazy. 
Embarrassed. And I'm talking about, and I'm talking about <laughs> so many legends. Like the '90s was the best era of music and comedy of all yeah. time. And it's almost yeah. like you ruining your legacy with all this stuff. Yep. Yeah, Everything but it's not that, so that, bad. We, that we worked so hard for. But if you didn't do it in your um, teens, it's time to do it now. Then it, you know. Uh, no, it's not. Well, no. This is the cruise <laughs> control point of your life. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah, see. you're already dealing with a lot at 50. You, you know, kids getting older, people in their 50 start to lose parents and all that kind of stuff. What? You know, uh, becoming grandparents yeah. and all that stuff. It should be, you know, it's already difficult, but you enjoy it at the same time. But at the added drama, the stuff that nobody asked for, that's that's crazy. Right. That's why I don't stay it out is. past 10 o'clock. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Get a lot less stress in your life. Oh, Come <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. We More Rick's Round the Morning Show coming up. Hey, all right, Rick's Round the Morning Show. Hey, what, what you got, Rock? Say, man, so if you got kids of a certain age or a sugar addiction, you're probably going out on a candy run or two this weekend. There's a ranking online of the best Easter candy of all time, and thousands of people weighed in. Here's some of the top winners. The Cadbury Mini Eggs. Easter Pastel M&M's. Hershey's yeah. sock, uh, Solid Milk Chocolate Eggs. I like that one right there. That's Solid Milk Chocolate oh, yeah. Eggs. Of course, Jelly Beans. And then the top were the Reese's Peanut Butter Eggs. Have you had them, Rick? Yeah. Yeah, they're they, yeah. Yeah, they pretty good. Um, they got a little I like, bit. I like, to, I like to go in, um, go in Walgreens and get that Brock candy. The Brock's, B-R, yeah. That, that B-R-A-C-H, those, those Brock, little Brock's, damn. yeah. Brock, sweet, uh, they eat the eggs, but they got the marshmallows on the inside. Yeah, but that came at the bottom of the list, believe it or not. The Brock's Bunny Basket Eggs is second to oh, last. Good. That means more for us. We eat it. <laughs> but over twenty, it. there was 24 over Easter candies on this ranking list, man. And coming in dead last out of everything was the Bunny Corn, which is similar to the Easter version of the Halloween candy corn. Why does everybody hate that candy corn? Because I, I, it's disgusting. It's no, not it's that not. candy corn. You crazy. I love candy corn. It's disgusting. Candy corn got it going on. You buy the peanut no, at the time. You buy the yellow off, then you buy yes. the white, then you buy the orange. Yes. Right. No. That's how I eat it. Yeah, that candy corn. like birthday candles. I, 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 they, I bet they didn't check with nobody in my neighbor damn hood. <laughs> <laughs> bet <laughs> they didn't check those. And, uh, I know it's chocolate. Yeah, bro, but that Brock got some of the best candy, you, but you have to go to uh, Walgreens or Dollar Tree to get that. And so you get some of the original Easter candy that you grew up with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, dog. But yeah. then, then the Easter candy gonna be on sale uh, uh, Monday. Yes, sir. You can go get all that stuff and put it in the deep freezer and be ready for next year. Oh, get ready! Oh, give it out for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I do be doing that sometimes. You got to slightly mix it in there. But man, don't nobody have time to peel them chocolate eggs though. Peel that little thin aluminum foil. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh huh. Don't nobody like this solid milk chocolate rabbit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah. I like the yeah. malted eggs too. The ones. Yeah. With the, um, I can't yellow. stand them, dog. On marshmallows with the little sprinkly mm-hmm. little things on them, mm-hmm. the marshmallow, the, the, the marshmallow bunnies, the peeps, right? Yeah, the peeps. Them things Ooh. nasty. People be eating them things like they good. So, and then what? What's the yellow ones with the with the sprinkles? Is that what you're talking about? The little, yeah, little they come yellows. in. Yeah, they they, yellow and pink peeps. Yeah, can't do that, dog. Yeah, they, they yeah they they are different, but they they good for decoration though. Just, just to have them in there, but now they're doing all they're doing all the candies now. All all of the different candies, uh, even the stuff that you see on Nickelodeon, like when your kids watching Paw Patrol and Peppa Pig, all of the candies that they uh advertise on those uh cartoons. Now they got the uh, Easter version of all of the candies that they advertise. So so they they way uh above you know the traditional Easter candy. But uh, as long as I got a, a, a good Easter egg and just just getting the feel of it. Man, I'm good. You got a big uh, Easter basket ready for Grayson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be putting, putting a, a football, a basketball, uh, uh, j- just some little stuff in there. But he'll get he'll get the candy, but, you know, it's always based off of football or whatever. My granddaddy got me an Easter bag and had a, little, had a transmission in there. So uh. make, sure, <laughs> make sure I was. <laughs> Try to make sure I would. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, make sure, uh, make sure you didn't grow up to do an entertainment report. Right. <laughs> so I get paid. Mm. You know, like I said, if I get paid to kick mm. and the best at what I do. God, yes, you are. Hands down. Damn it, yes, you are. God, capital God. G, mm-hmm. capital A, mm-hmm. capital O, mm-hmm. capital T. Period. 
to get. <laughs> Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the T. It's Gary, baby. Gary has the T and the Kahlua of the day, Gary. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning, you. It's Friday. A be- good Friday. A beautiful day in the neighborhood, y'all. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Recently, after y'all, Bad Boy Entertainment... CEO Sean Diddy Combs, y'all, was raided by that Homeland Security, y'all. It was reported, y'all, that Diddy sold his Revolt TV to an anonymous buyer. Well, y'all, the same day an anonymous poster, y'all, was out on, on Ryan with Snitch, y'all, and they announced that the buyer was Shea Moisture founder Richard Lou Dennis. Now, they're saying it's being reported that this is official, y'all. Now, Richard Lou Dennis, y'all, he will be the new, y'all, the very much so new owner of Diddy's TV venture, Revolt. And they're saying that Dennis made his fortune, y'all, in the skincare business. Now, he co-founded Shea Moisture in Harlem in the 1990s, and he sold it. But now they're saying that the deal is already done and that they are getting ready, y'all, to announce it in the upcoming days, y'all, uh, inside of Toll Page 6. Now, they're saying, but, you know, now that the raid and everything is going on, it will appear, y'all, as though that he is purchasing, y'all, after the fact, but it was important, y'all, very important to Sean, y'all, to get a buyer that was African-American because he wants y'all to keep the legacy of having a black-owned business. Now, they're saying he started it off. He started it off one day the way that, you know, he wants it, and he wanted to continue, y'all, with that path. Now, the um, network airs news and entertainment related to both mainstream and black culture, y'all, which is a good thing. Now, I, I um Googled Mr. Um, Richard Lou, and he's worked, y'all, Mr. Dennis is worth four hundred million dollars, so you know I guess it's good that Diddy wants to keep it in the African American community and what have you. And that's good that he has that choice to do that. So congratulations to Mr. Um, Dennis, y'all, that this is going to still be you know a black owned company and hopefully and prayerfully y'all that all goes well, you know, with him and you know the situation that's going on um, with Diddy. So we're gonna keep all parties lifted up in our prayers, y'all. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. It's a very sad day. It's still happening, y'all, with Simon and his beautiful wife, uh, wife to be an uh, ex-wife, honey, um, Miss Portia. Now they're saying, y'all, that weeks after the divorce documents were revealed, Portia, y'all, was pushing very hard to enforce the stipulation in her prenuptial agreement, enforcing y'all her estranged husband Simon Gubardia, y'all, out of their beautiful Georgia mansion in 30 days. Well, now Simon has slapped the Real Housewives of Atlanta production company with a cease and desist, preventing y'all Portia from filming in his mansion for her triumphant return, y'all, to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, since leaving the show to marry the Nigerian businessman, they're saying that, you know, he don't, ain't going to let her, he don't want her in a mansion. That's his house. He don't want her to film it. A lot of people saying, you know, I guess it should have, it probably was the marital house, Ricky, because don't, it don't, when you get married to a person, it's called the marital house or what have you, and it's not yeah. your house or mine. Yeah, and they're saying that the legal letter obtained by page six states that the Guabardias is in the sole owner, that Guabardia at least is the sole owner of his Georgia mansion, and as such does not consent to the release, disclosure, or publication of any photo- photography of the property, nor does he consent to the taping, filming, or recording of the property, including any aspects of any activity in or about the property, y'all. So, the, now they um now they said um um according to the um deed, y'all, as evidence, they're saying that Williams Forty Two does not have a stake y'all in that nearly seven million dollar mansion which he purchased back in November of 2021. So they're saying failure to comply with the request herein will result in Mr. Guardia taking legal action against honey the letter continuer. So what? yeah, so it's sad, Ricky. That, it's only a seven million dollars house. He could let Portia at least have half of it or at least film Real Housewives. Like, what's she gonna go film at night in the, the studio? I mean, when they I got mean, that big mansion. Oh my god! So, so, so she could go there, but they, the film crew can't. Well, he didn't even say she could go there, honey. He don't need the one of them. That her or the film crew. So oh. I, I don't know. That's sad. You know that happens. You know that's the ugliness of a divorce. It sure is, honey. I tell you, it's amazing though, Rick. You was in love yesterday, and now today we hate each other. The thin yeah. line between love and hate. That's what they say, honey. It's a thin line <laughs> between love and hate. Yeah. And I guess it's definitely a thin line. So we're going to follow that story. And hopefully, you know, Simon softened up because Portia's going to need somewhere to film. So, I mean, why not um, film in the mansion that she um, once lived in that was part of? So we're going to see how that work out. All right, the Kahlua today is one of my favorite colors. Just in time, y'all, for Good Friday and pre-Easter. My Kahlua today, y'all, is pastels. On the high end, you say pastels. And on the low end, you say beautiful light blues, beautiful soft yellows, precious pinks, and all those beautiful colors that the kids and these grown men could be wearing um, 
Easter colors to church Sunday, you know, because I think more men should wear more of the precious pinks, Ricky, because it's yeah. nice. It brings you out and it brings out your skin tones and all that good stuff. Is that right? Not the hot pink, but the pastel the pink. The pastel pink, not the hot pink. Yeah, that's what color I'm wearing. You wearing pastel pink? Yep. Well, that's good. What then. about powder blue? And part of what I said, that's a yeah, you light. You get away with that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can wear that color too. Honey. And even white, honey, we could wear white, you know, so just sure something can. soft. So a nice, soft pastel color. Yeah, for time Easter. to bring all that white back. Yep. So there you have it. All right. Y'all give it up for Gary with the T. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all, Rick Smiley Morning Show. I got your wake up calls. 8669 Rick Gary. Calling out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I like to send a wake up to my daughter Leah, to my other daughter Mark, to my two twin boys, Chase and Chad. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hey, I'm calling from Macon, Georgia, and my name is Pat. I'm waking up everybody in Bill County. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is Uncle Keith calling from the ATL, wishing everybody in the A. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hey, this is Toy. I'm calling from Tallahassee, Florida, and I want to wake up all of my family in Birmingham, Alabama. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, if you listening on your radio, it's a whole gang of cities tuned in, lock in, what's yours, cause we gon' let them know, where you at North Fork, wake up, in Birmingham, wake up, Oklahoma, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. St. Louisville, wake up, New Orleans, wake up, hey, Memphis, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Watch out, it's time to be involved in your mind. There are some secrets that are okay to tell when it comes to smelling good, and here's one for you. While giving 72 hours of freshness, Secret Whole Body Deodorant will leave you smelling amazing. Now hurry and pass it on. Hello? Yes, I need to speak with Wanda, please. Speaking. Wanda, good morning. Good morning. This is Johnny Hurston. I'm one of the academic advisors and student counselors up here at Community College. Where your daughter goes, your daughter Barbara. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I spoke with Barbara Mm -hmm. in regards to her sister, Elise. Now, a sister just gave birth to a little baby. Said the name was the Sierra. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to just want to talk to you as two adults as to why you have these two women in your house and one of them is getting pregnant. I don't want that to happen to Barbara because you done already raised Elise wrong. She ain't What's married. What's your name is? My name is Johnny Hurston. Mr. Hurston. Yes, ma'am. And you asking me why is one of my daughters getting pregnant and you don't want the other one to get like that? Well, I'm just trying to look out for Barbara because when them kids have them babies, it's harder to get their education. Mm-hmm. And see, you done already raised one heifer, and I don't want you to raise two. I raised a heifer. Well, you, she you ain't... want Barbara to get pregnant. Yeah, I don't want her to be no either. You know what? I think you dialed the wrong number. I'm trying I'm trying to hold my composure, but it's getting to a point where I'm getting ready to open up the back door, and I'm going to light your up and you ain't gonna never call here again about Barbara Royal Lee. Well, take your ass out that back door then. If you want to, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be civilized about this. I'm gonna whoop on your ass. You got that? Because if you ever call my house again about my daughters or how I raised or well, she got pregnant under your watch. She got pregnant at the house. She got pregnant under my watch. She got pregnant at I'm your house. At your ass under my watch. How about that, baby? I will whoop your ass like I was. Hello. The person you called is no longer on the line. Hello? Babe, I'm trying to be an adult about this, baby. You ain't no damn adult. You babe, ain't no adult. I'm you one of the assholes. Wanda, I'm just trying to figure out why she named the baby Sierra after the R&B singer. The baby probably looked like Bobby Brown. I don't know you, and you gonna wish you ain't never met me. You Tell you can, what you do. Look, Wanda, I'm just trying to be civilized don't about... call me Wanda, damn it. You don't know me. I'm trying to do this for, for your daughter, Barbara. I'm doing this for, for the you Barbara. You got a damn thing to do with Barbara. You I do. She came out of my... Hold. You ain't got a damn thing to worry about her education. Matter of fact, I want your name and fucking address so I can have your ass fired. Now I see where she gets it from because well, I. Maybe you do, damn it. It ain't too late for your daughter, Barbara. It's too you late for Elise. My ass, She's a. Barbara's ass, kiss Sierra's ass, and kiss Woo Woo ass. You got a lot of ass kissing to do. Elise is already a skeezer. I'm just trying to save Barbara from the same fate. If you keep threatening me, I'm going to have to go to the trunk and get that act right. When I get through with your ass, you're going to have tire tracks crossing. Babe, I'm talking about a Mossberg sawed off. What you I talking about? Give a what you got? I, I, they made one, they made two. I make your ass eat that because, see, I'm one of them that don't believe shit, and I'm going to kick your ass. 
ass until you turn to one, because you sound like a fucking Oreo. I'm a mean bitch, and you don't want to f*** with me, and you don't want to call my damn house no more. Okay, well, i tell you who I am for real, baby. My, my real name is Comedian Roy Wood Jr. How you doing this morning, Wanda? I'm fine. I'm sorry I'm for fine, pranking you. That ain't the way to play with me. <laughs> Your daughter Barbara put us up to prank calling. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even going to apologize. I'm sorry for saying the baby looked like Bobby Brown. I didn't mean that. <laughs> That's okay. It's all good. <laughs> all right. You have a good one. Okay. Uh, Black Tony, where you at? Hey, so, um, hey cuz you think, hey, hey, look, I'm trying to get over, though. I'm trying to get over. I had to turn around, come back home. I'm trying to get over. Show though. started at 5 a.m., bro. I had to How's that when you call in? You call the same left. time every morning. Because uh, that's just a con- uh, con- uh, condition. You condition. Condition like like Pavlo's dog. Listen, Psychology 101. When Pavlo rings the bell, the dog begins to salivate because the dog is conditioned. Don't nobody care about that out there. Here you talking about. Anyway, look. Yeah. Shawty, you talking about all that? Shawty, it ain't funny, Jawline. All that stuff. stuff. Man, ain't nothing, everything funny. You could you be making jokes about everything. Take me off the radio for a minute. So Hold I can on. talk to you on private. So that's what I'm trying to Whoa. say. I'm trying to talk to you. Oh. I was hollering at somebody. Yeah. Hold on. Chill, chill, chill. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Look, Shawty, um, yeah. I, I got an embarrassing problem in the morning. That's why I ain't wanted to be on the radio. And every time I tell you take it out of the radio, I listen back. Then it be on the radio. Hey, hey, hey Black Tony, Black Tony. Shouty, did you push the right button so this is just me and you talking right now? Black Tony. Wait. You think, you think I have you on the air right now for something no. serious? You say, if you say you did, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to push, push you, Shouty. All right, then. No. Look. Look, I'm just gonna get right to it, shout I pulled a real bad in my pants this morning, and I ain't got nothing else to put on. I ain't got nothing else to put on, and I can't get the stank out. But the stank ain't got in your jeans. Y'all got some Levi 501 jeans, shout and you know they thick. Yeah. And they yeah, holding on to the stank, the shout I can't call. I can't come in the studio like that, yeah. stanking like nah. that. Yeah, because if you pull and all if that, you, if you put in some Lee and some Levi's, the fabric that those jeans made out of, John, they gonna they gonna hold. They gonna hold. And yeah, I sprayed so, some. I sprayed some Pabrizzo, no. And I. I so man, did you? Man, did, did it happen man. in the car? No, nah, shout it. It happened. It happened when I got dressed and I was walking outside. And I said, "Well, yeah, I had opened up the door, sat in the car, and I had ate some cabbage the last night with my some grandma what? had made some cabbage, and I pulled it real hard, and it felt some good. Cabbage, you know, you know, yeah, you know how when you pull real hard, it feels. What you good. cook? What you cook with the cabbage? Some uh, uh, she put some, some uh, meat in there. She had some a uh, little little pork meat in there. But look, yeah. it was just some cabbage. I just ate the cabbage and I pulled it real hard. And I said, I said, okay, I got that. I, I'm I'm good. Now I get to work. I ain't gonna have to poop. So yeah. it started stinking so bad. Then I went in the store. I went in the family dollar to get me some for breed. And yeah. folks were folk were looking at me like, ew, he stank. <laughs> So yeah. then I sprayed out a whole can of Febreze on there. It still stinks. So I had went back home, but my grandma was doing laundry, so I ain't got nothing else to put on. So soon as my yeah. clothes get out of the dryer, I'll put some more pants on and I'll be the worst. I'll be over there about 10, 15, 11 o'clock. Bro, we'll be on. That's what time we get off. <laughs> That's on you then, old boy. What happy you? <laughs> Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. Mm-mm, it's Gary, baby. Oh. Oh, let me smile in the morning show. Six minutes after the hour, Gary has the tea and the color of the day. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning, you. Happy Friday to you. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. I don't know what's going on in Houston, Ricky, but, honey, these proprietors, these owners of these restaurants in Houston and celebrities just acting real ugly just in time for Easter. Now, it's being reported, y'all, that rapper Bun B, y'all, and his leadership team say that the ex-associates stole money, y'all, from the company coffers, which, you know, so counterclaim they alleged, you know, a swipe recipe. Now, if y'all don't know, Bun B and a couple of his um, um, colleagues are on the restaurant or the burger place, Trill Burger. I don't know if y'all heard of that. But back in July of 2022, they said um, rapper Bun B and um, chef Mike Farm, y'all accepted the award for Ultimate Burger Spot, y'all, in America on ABC's Good Morning America. Now, the win, which included, y'all, a $10,000 prize, capped a banner. 
first year, y'all, for Trill Burgers at the time of the Popular Smash Burger pop-up, y'all, in and around Houston. Yet, unbeknownst, y'all, to the general audience there, saying y'all that the celebration did not include two of Trill's original co-founders, Patsy and Benson Viverez, or Varvarez. And Now, they're saying that the details of the partnership between the Varvarez and other Trill Burger figureheads, Bun B., Rapper Bun B, Andy Nguyen, and y'all Nick Skirfield, y'all were revealed, honey. And they're saying the kind of claim that the siblings filed back in early 2024 to an existing lawsuit, y'all, that the current three Trill Burger leaders, y'all, filed against the Barbaries Patsy and her brother Benson, y'all. And it's just going on and on. They're trying to say that, you know, it was like $45,000, y'all. They're saying that in the lawsuit that Bun B, Nguyen, and Skirfield claimed, y'all, that the Barbaries stole $45,000, which that's a lot of hamburgers, Ricky, to steal that kind of money, y'all, from the company. Now, they're saying that the lawsuit and the claims paint a messier picture of the restaurant that, you know, otherwise it's been, you know, the talk of Houston's food um, sink, you know, everybody been raving. Um, Trill they Burger. Those burgers are good. Yeah, yeah, they say they're real good, though, but honey, these girls are fighting. They saying they're stealing money, honey, and go on and go on. I mean, that goes, that happens, y'all, when you own restaurants with people and, and don't own them out yourself. It's just going to always be a problem. You got to keep your eye all them hamburgers. What? Wimpy. Yeah, you know, he sure <laughs> damn did. He sure did, honey, on Popeye. He sure uh, did, Ricky. I, I, I believe you, too, honey. Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> 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 and they definitely did. But but they're saying, though, y'all, according to um, the people now, they're saying that the leadership team, um, you know, these people are claiming, y'all, they're trying to say that um, Bun B initially, they say he stole a doggone car. They're saying that um, Trill Burgers attorneys claim that the, um, that Bun B, had, they said that this, um, the funds, that he misappropriated funds, y'all, that's put that way to buy a high-end car to advertise the smash burger business now they're saying that trill burgers attorney claimed that the car was not high-end rigged but it was a sedan and um that it was never purchased but was in fact rented y'all a move they allege was supported by the valveries honey and it goes on and on to the break of dawn honey so, i mean it was it was it, it sounded like he bought or or leased a vehicle probably wrapped it with the branding of trill burger just to kind of have a marketing vehicle to drive around town. Exactly, but honey, these people, it's just, Lord, they just going, it's just, it's so much to the story, though, y'all, but we just got to pray as long, and, and while we praying for them, continue to pray for the um, turkey leg people that's fighting, too, honey. So in, Turkey in, leg hut. Yeah, in Houston, too. I mean, it's just, I don't know what's going on with these Africans in America. So but what's going on with turkey leg hut? Well, you know, they um filing bankruptcy and stuff, and, you know, the husband and wife were divorcing because allegedly the husband was doing things that the wife didn't care for him to be doing, and, you know, and misappropriating money and stuff. It's just so much going on. And people love that restaurant, too. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just a lot going on in Houston. And while we're still in Houston, y'all, congratulate um, um, Beyonce. You know, she released a song, um, Jolene. And I heard it, it sounds, you know, fairly well. You know, I really love the original Jolene, but um, Beyonce kind of, you know, mixed hers up a little bit, honey. Man, that's nice. Yeah, I it's, like it. It's cute. I like Dolly Parton's version as well, but um, yeah. um, Beyonce said, don't come for my man. Jo- um, Dolly Parton said, please don't take my man. So, you know, Beyonce did the black version. Like, don't come for him. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, what? what I mean, and that, that's, uh, you're not a musician, but if you're a musician. Then I'm not a music. musician. I'm just a listener to music, and that's a uh, third yeah. and long for me. I'll pass. Oh, yeah, what? I'll take it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I like it a lot because she brings a certain type of energy to the song, you know. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you know she could do several versions of it, you know. And then yeah. that's just the first part. She probably had a beat drop somewhere in there. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I, I like it too, but... You got to like country music, though. Man. You got to like... And I like country I music because I, I was raised music. on country music. We had to watch it every Saturday because my mama liked country music. But, I mean, it's almost something like you're forcing country music. Yeah. I nah, like country I'm pop. Good. They got country pop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well so we, we we love Beyonce, y'all. So y'all need to pop back into R and B music. How about that? Nah, you don't have to stay in the box. Yeah, you know, yeah, she's done enough. It's only so much you could do. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. like sometimes comedians go into acting. That ain't I no different you. from from that. And then sometimes that you, you leave acting and go into advertising right. and, and right. go into different 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 areas of your career. If you've right. been doing the same thing. Yeah, Snoop Dogg. Like if, if we want to hear Beyonce, we can just listen to her old songs. It'd be hard to come up with new stuff in the same type of box all the time. Mm. I like her in the box that she was in. Thank you. Okay, yeah, but that, but but think about think about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody want to keep you in a box. Sometimes you got to be outside of the box because I mean, hell, they got money too. I know. Shoot. Yeah, go go get all the money. 
and then leave that down to generation after generation after generation of wealth. That's what I'm be talking about. Snoop Dogg did a reggae album. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I ain't like that either. <laughs> and, he, and he did gospel with a uh, gospel song with Shirley Caesar. Yes, I ain't like that either. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, y'all, we don't need to go into porn. Let's see if we're like that. I mean, that might be something different for y'all. All right, the color. Give us the color today. <laughs> the color today, honey, is one of my favorite colors. My color today is pastel. On the high end, you say pastel, and on the lower, you say all the beautiful powder blues, the soft yellows, and the beautiful precious pinks. All the nice Easter colors, y'all. That's your color all right, for today. Then. Y'all give it up for Gary with the T if you would. Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, I'll see y'all in Cleveland tonight. Uh, uh, y'all come on out to the casino. In the casino. It's going to be fun. Now. We're going to have a good-ass time. All right. Chores, homework, and uh, uh, of course, all of the house rules, all the things that we complain about as a kid, but what's something you genuinely miss about your childhood? The hashtag, man, I miss my childhood, has already gotten thousands of responses. Here are some of the best answers we found so far. Of course, not having to pay for anything came up at the top of the list. (laughs) Uh, Not having to figure out what to cook every day, because, you know, mom and daddy always had food on the doggone stove. Summer break. A lot of people miss summer break, a legitimate oh, yeah. summer break. Uh, being obvious to how dysfunctional. When, when summer break was eight weeks. Yeah, come on, dog. Ten weeks. Go back to school. Back in the day, we used to go back to school <laughs> September the 1st. Yes, right. sir. Man, school started at the beginning of a, a dog on August now. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, being obvious to how dysfunctional your family was. Right. <laughs> and being cool with it. Uh, what about naps? And that remember that remember that cartoon milk you got when you uh, went to kinder, went to preschool in the kindergarten. <laughs> oh yeah, mm. yes sir. Uh, but them, them naps hidden. Your grandmama lay you down on the pallet. Y'all don't know what a pallet is. That's a blanket on the floor. That's all I'm on there. And put that box fan down and yeah. turn that TV on in the heat of the night and all my children in general hospital. Yes sir. Yes. I don't know nothing about that. You know what I miss? What? Them square pizzas at elementary school. Come on, y'all. <laughs> what? With the little uh, cube oh, pepperoni. With the, t- with the tater Man. Tots. Man tater and tots. corn. There ain't never no pepperoni on there. No, that was, that was just some, some kind of veal meat. Sausage meat. Some kind of sausage meat on, on that pizza. But every Friday with them uh, tater tarts. Uh, uh, and then and then, and then it was milk. You always had to have milk. Or white milk have. or chocolate milk. I yep. never liked chocolate. No juice, no nothing, just mm-hmm. milk. With everything you had out of that lunchroom, it was a, a carton that of pizza milk. Down with that chocolate milk. Mm. Yes, sir. What about the uh, magic of birthdays and Christmas? Like, the magic is gone now. <laughs> yeah, birthday parties. Uh, I still do the birthday parties for, you know, younger nieces and nephews. And uh, I do. I, Christmas, uh, same thing. I kind of kind of make Christmas fun. I literally go out. I got um, uh, my uncle. My uncle Bruce does characters. So I'll call him and let him talk to the kids. I went to Chuck E. Cheese, and Chuck E. Cheese wasn't there. So I called Uncle Bruce on speak phone. I said, Bruce, uh, is Chuck E. Cheese with you? And uh, and he talked to, you know, got on the phone and started talking like Chuck E. Cheese. So, yeah, we make, we make holidays special. You know what I miss, man? I miss going outside, and there was kids everywhere playing. I was just yeah. about to say that, playing. You go outside now, just man, it's, it's a ghost town in the neighborhood. And all, I, I, I thought it was just... Uh, but but I take Grayson over to the hood. When them boys, little boys, be back there playing football with them silver caps. Yes, sir. If you want your son to go to the NFL? You better drop him off in the project with them little boys with them dreadlocks and them silver caps. Come on, dog. Up, over there in Lotta Hill, South. When they be out there hidden playing football with a with a ball up paper cup. Man, you got a group of kids playing football. Another group playing tag over there. Another group over there playing stick ball. I mean, it was always yeah. something going on. Another group riding and, and their bikes playing and football. Packs. It, 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 you don't even have teams playing football. It's everybody against you. If you pick that ball up and start running, you got everybody against you. Yes, sir. We call that kill the man. Yes, sir. <laughs> pick up, get busted. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was the best. We, we called throw up tackle. Yeah, yeah, throw up tackle. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best football of all time. Well, you. But, Darren, what made your childhood special? Oh, Lord, I miss those whippings with a stench of car, baby. My mama used to call us in the house, honey. And if we did something wrong, we got a good little whip. It molded us, Ricky. It molded me to who I am today. You say you missed it. Did y'all have fire hydrants? 
Oh, we didn't have fire hydrants. We didn't have fire hydrants. No, but we couldn't open them, Brad. In the hood in Chicago, we had fire hydrants. They'll bust them open and stick a stick in there, and they shoot all up in the air. And that's was a, that was our swimming pool in the hood. Yeah, they oh, did that yeah. in Philly, in Philadelphia too. When I would go up there we for go the put summer, on swimming suits. Yeah, they bust <laughs> open them fire what? hydrants and have a ball. Yep. Y'all remember slip and slide, ball. block club yeah. parties. Yeah, yeah, slip and slide was was fun until you uh, get the slide and then you find out there's rocks up yep. under there. <laughs> get that rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all. You go, you, you go in the house bleeding. <laughs> Like, what happened? That damn, damn yeah. slip and slide. <laughs> slip and slide with all them damn rocks up under there. <laughs> slip and slide was hidden, though. Yeah, dog. Yeah, but yeah. these kids what had trampolines. Our, our tramp, hey, Brett. Yeah. Our trampoline was them damn box springs and mattresses on the side yes. of the dumpster. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yes. That, uh, yeah yes. that's what I learned how to do yeah. a backwards somersault on, a backwards flip. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Didn't care what kind of stains it had on it. No, uh, you right. know. Yeah, a big pea stain on that mattress. You out there <laughs> jumping and having you a good ass night. <laughs> Brad, you said something about them big wheels. You know, then there was yeah, that, big there, wheels. There was that big one kid wheels. that had a little extra money. He had the green machine. Yeah, yes. That green machine, yeah, that was expensive, yeah. man. And when that yeah. you ride it, right. you slow down stuff. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. When that you ride it. No. You can afford no damn Totino's party pizza. You can afford none of that stuff. Your grandma say, hell no. I'm not going to spend my food stamps on that. When food stamps when man. food stamps came in a book. Yes, baby. Yes. And, then, and you better not tear them out. You, you ain't getting get nothing. If that, 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 that damn oh food stamps God. ain't inside of that book, yeah. oh stop playing God. with me. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. And the God. best childhood That's... of all time and stuff. Yes. Where you can bust it with some tissy cream <gasps> deodorant and stick your finger in there and put that perm what? up under your armpit hair. When mm. nobody. Oh, Let's Come go to the now. phone. <laughs> eight six six nine Ricky. Eight six six nine Ricky. Good morning. Jerome Greer calling from uh, Norfolk, and the uh, thing I miss is Saturday morning cartoon. Jimmy Martin, West Palm Beach. Um, riding horses with my dad. We used to ride horses every Saturday. My name is Donald Gray, and I'm from Junction City, Louisiana. And one thing I miss about childhood is the fact that I got to pay bills and deal with kids that act like I did when I was a kid. Mike, I generally miss uh, old Beyonce because this new country Beyonce trash. I'm Lisa from Eagle Lake, and one thing I generally miss from my childhood is hanging out at my grandma's house with all my cousins. We had so much fun back in the day when we were little. Hey, this is Mel, and I miss family get-togethers and just the feeling of love, like real love. From Lexington, South Carolina, and sitting on the back of the truck with my dad eating butter pecan ice cream in the summertime and making lots of this is Eugene. I'm calling from Tampa, Florida. I miss when I did not have to work. I'm calling from Houston, Texas. And one thing I generally miss is just being young with my siblings and both of my parents here. Laura, calling from Houston, Texas. I miss family about my childhood. Yeah, y'all remember, y'all remember how I'd go get it? Yo, come yeah. on, right? yep. And then you find yes. out that one girl in the neighborhood with no neck and a double chin will lay down right by the base and you step <laughs> over. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming to get you. I'm they right a, here. They got a new I'm name right for it here. now. Is that what they, they got a new name for it now. <laughs> it's, called, it's called assault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. More Rick and Smiley Party Show coming up. All right, y'all, Rick Smiley the Morning Show. It is time for Battle of the Sexes. We got our uh, Tamara from Monroe, Louisiana, listening to us on the Mix 1019. Hello, then, hey. Hey, Tamara, how you doing? Good. Good. And then we got Darius from Chattanooga, Tennessee, 93.5, The Groove, Chat Town. What up, Darius? Hey, what up? Hey, now. Now, this is not the Darius that be calling in. This is the regular Darius, right? <laughs> no, nah, I'm a good one. No, nah, I'm a good one. I'm supposed to be at work, but I'm late. <laughs> hey, man, we happy to have you out. We got Darius, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Tamara from Monroe, Louisiana. Thank y'all, y'all, calling up here to fight for those coveted Dollar Tree prizes. Listen, and if you don't know the answer to the question, make sure that you say pass so we can go on to the next question. Don't waste all your time on one question. All right, y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tamara, we're going to go first. Darius, you next. All right, start the clock. All right, how many NBA championship rings does Michael Jordan have? A five. It's six. All right, what's the capital of Tennessee? Uh, Chattanooga. No, Nashville. 
All right, what part of the animal, what part of the am, animal family do dogs belong to? A mammal. <laughs> Canine. <laughs> what boxer did Will Smith portray in a movie? Um, Muhammad Ali. Yes. <laughs> How many megabytes are in a gigabyte? A thousand. Oh. Yep. <laughs> In what room of the house would dude bombs be used? Dude bombs. Bathroom. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh. What company produces the carrier and uh and the and the boxster? Pass. All right, that's our uh, Porsche. If the dash lights in your car go out, you may need to change what? Uh, the battery. The fuse. It, okay. That, is, is that it? That's it. Oh, she all the time. How many? But she got you did good. She got three. I'm just glad I got one. Yeah, yeah, you got three. <laughs> that, that's good. Cause I just, I just seen worse. All right, Rock. Darius, let's go, man. Start the clock. Oh, cool. Let's go, Rock. In fashion, what is a mule? That dope. A type of shoe. Who, uh, who was the first black woman to headline Coachella? Beyonce. Yes. Who is known as the goddess of love and beauty? Aphrodite. Yes. What do you call the fabric that drapes around the bed, reaching from the box spring to the floor? Bed skirt. Yes, sir. Thank you, mama. What year did the internet become available to the public? 95? No, 93. Ooh. What is a skort? That's a dress and shorts. Deal. That's Real it. Work. Yes, sir. Who was the first black woman to win five Grammy Awards in one year? Beyonce again? No, sir. Lauren Hill. Uh, what is Bay an acronym for? Baby. No, <laughs> before anyone. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> before anyone else. That's what I thought. That's it. We got a winner, man. Who? <laughs> he is. Darius. Oh, man, you won. Yes, sir. That's oh, okay. What did he win? All right, Darius. Congratulations, sir. You're a winner today of the fabulous, highly coveted prize bag from America Store, the Dollar Tree. All right. <laughs> All right, let's start it off from Squish Squash Stretcher Rules. You got a stretchy duck toy, ages three and up. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> My daughter love that. Oh, yeah. From Sure and Fresh, feminine cleansing cloths for sensitive skin. Citrus scented with aloe and chamomile, alcohol-free, hypoallergenic. Oh, yeah. That's going to be safe. <laughs> you got a six-ounce glass. Okay. That's it? <laughs> yeah, what? It's a glass. Not a set. Not, uh, oh, not no. a set. A six-ounce glass. Just one. All right. Get that thing by granted for orange juice. You also got a metal harmonica, Darius. Just put it in your mouth and blow. (laughs) From Daniel Boone, you got frozen ham trimmings. You can heat them up in the microwave, air fryer, or traditional oven. How about that? (laughs) From Crazy Art, a 16-count Super Senate crayon box. Why just color when you can also sniff? Mm -hmm. (laughs) From John Morrell brand, hot smoked sausage. Do with that what you will. (laughs) You've also got an 18 by 22 inch roll of shelf liner paper. Oh, yeah, have fun with that. (laughs) And finally, from Pearson's, a salted nut roll. (laughs) The original, vanilla nougat, golden caramel, and roasted peanuts. Oh, yeah. (laughs) All yours, courtesy of the Ricky's Molly Morning Show and the Dollar Dream. Ma'am, we're not going to let you go home empty-handed because it's Easter weekend. We want everybody to be a winner. So you got a $20 gift card from the Ladies Brazilian Clinic where they say, Come on, ladies, it's safe and fun. Put some hot wax on that fro on your honey bun. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Come on, ladies. It's safe and fun. Let's wax that fro off that honey bun. Oh, Oh, yeah. For Easter. Congratulations, Darius. Chat town. What up? You know what to do. Morning is by the morning show. Coming up next. 
Our favorite grandmama, Miss Bernice Jenkins. Yeah. Hey, Jenny, good morning. Good morning. I got your church announcement this morning. Govern yourself. Accordingly. Govern yourself. Accordingly. There will be a meeting for all members with names that get rev that get on rev nerves right after service in the Sunday school classroom. <laughs> with the following members, please go uh, go down right after service. Uh, Bertha Bethel, <laughs> David Davidson, Rob Robinson, <laughs> Harry Harvey. Dan Daniels, <laughs> Shelly Shelton, <laughs> Tommy Thomas, <laughs> and William Williams. <laughs> That's William Williams, Tommy Thomas, Shelby Shelton, Dan Daniels, <laughs> Harry Harvey, Rob Robinson, David Davidson. And Bethel Bertha. I'm sorry, Bertha Bertha. Yeah, that's my name. Go right downstairs. I don't know what he want to meet with y'all about, but your names get on his nerve, and they just got on mine. <laughs> the pastor had said that any member seen pulling into the parking lot that's in the car by yourself wearing a mask going to have to sit up in the back and they're doing service away from all the other members because you are weird and don't nobody trust you. <laughs> yes. Anybody in a, ma- in a car with a mask on by themselves, something wrong with them. Roll your windows up. I don't know what they got. Oh, Lord. The homegoing service this Friday for Brother Jimmy Harris Jr. That's Mother Luella Banks' stepson. You know them, Janie? Yeah! He was only 47 and was in good health. Uh-huh. Bes- besides, uh, 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 he had real bad sinus problems. <laughs> and what got him was two Mexican dudes that worked on his landscape crew say Jimmy had cheated them on their paychecks for a whole month, and they took his they took his primatine mist bottle and filled it up with that hot mustard sauce from P.F. Chang. <laughs> and when he squeezed it up his nose, his brain exploded. <laughs> so that's gonna be a closed casket. <laughs> pay them folks, <laughs> Brett. Pay them folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Janie. All right. That concludes our church tonight, but y'all have a good one. All right. All right. News headlines, entertainment, sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Rick, Smiley Morning Show, 25 minutes after the hour, y'all. I uh, got your front page right here, sent in from Maria Moore, the one and only Beyonce Aloysius. Good morning. Hey, good morning, and here are your headlines from News1.com. All right, well, nobody won the Powerball on Wednesday, which now makes the jackpot $935 million. Now they're saying the payout, if you choose to get the lump sum and after taxes, will be around $200 million, and that's going to go down Saturday night. Also in the news, former President Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and some other big names came out to support President Joe Biden and racked up a record-breaking $25 million for his re-election campaign last night. It was a great night, lots of stars, and uh, they definitely talked about a lot of hot topics. And if you're planning to go uh, hit the airport this weekend, well, you need to watch out. There is a travel advisory in place, spring break. This is the biggest spring break this week. They're saying, according to the the world's busiest airport, Hartsville, Jackson, Atlanta, they're expecting to see over 7.6 million travelers up until April 7th. I'll and if you're dang. yes, and if you're planning to go, they're suggesting you give yourself at least two and a half to three hours, even yep. with your regular domestic flights. So make sure you get out there and don't get stuck in the lines. And lastly, the CDC put out a warning aimed at older adults due to a 
high spike in chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis rates for people 55 and up. (laughs) Man. (laughs) Now, the number of syphilis cases has specifically increased seven times the normal rate, and (laughs) STI cases, which means uh, sexually transmitted infections, have it rose over 22% among people 45 and up. Well, the people forty five and up. Dang. STI cases y'all, have rose in y'all, ain't even, y'all can't even wait till the summer. It, it, so, it's, it's, hot. it's holy week and we got them kind of numbers. They had this conference and the reason doctors are saying okay. Yeah, he's he's on the floor right now. But doctors are citing an AARP survey that said forty percent of people aged sixty to eighty five are more sexually active than ever, and they may not have been given sex education provided to t- today's teenagers. And one of the main culprits are senior living and nursing homes uh, are one of the biggest offenders. What? <laughs> wait a minute. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So the people in the nursing home uh, got diseases. They get it, they getting it in in the, in the assistant living in a nursing home. They're citing the lack of contraception in nursing homes and senior living homes. Mm-hmm. Boy, they got to deal with that. And oh, damn, big mama got chlamydia <laughs> and bed sores. Oh, 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 I'm Beyonce. You can hit me up at Beyonce ATL Rock T. Y'all got to, y'all got to, y'all got to, y'all got to, y'all got to turn big mama over. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in sports? <laughs> Yeah, man. All right, so March Madness continued last night in the men's Sweet 16. How about Alabama pulling off the upset over the number one seed, North Carolina, to advance to the Elite Eight? UConn beat South Dakota State by 30 points, man, to advance. And speaking of UConn, uh, Vanessa Bryant surprised the UConn men's basketball team with the new Kobe Bryant sneakers, the Pro Trolls, the Italian camel version. Won't be available to the public until April. And if y'all don't remember, y'all may not remember, Kobe uh, and, and daughter Gigi, like UConn was like their favorite college team to go watch. Right. They would always go to the games or whatever. So that's why they're part of the, the, the Mamba program. So big ups to them right there. Uh, of course, today is the Women's Sweet 16. They tip off. So be glued to the television all weekend long watching the Women's 16. I know everybody else. If you ain't watching Women's College Tournament, this is your opportunity. I challenge you to watch one game. I don't care. Pick a team. Watch a game. You're going to be hooked. It is what it is. It is entertainment television to the max. It's yes. my quick sports support right there. Uh, Brad got the hot spot happening right now. The hot spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot. Yeah. Hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, Good morning. Nine. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. It's the Ricky Smiley Show. I'm your girl, Brad Tad Tad, and this is the hot spot. So let's get into it. Kanye West has said on a recent Instagram post that he washed both Kendrick Lamar and Drake. Ye says that he outdid Kendrick on the Life of Pablo collaboration with No More Parties in L.A. and beasted Drake during their 2021 Larry Hoover benefit concert in Los Angeles at the Coliseum. Now, Kanye wrote, everyone knows I washed Kendrick on No More Parties in L.A., yay began. Everyone knows I watched Drake at the Free Hoover concert. Everyone knows I brought Adidas into this culture, and I took them out. He went on to say, I made Yeezus, Dark Fantasy, Pablo, Graduation, Throne, 808s. I made Runaway, Devil in a Dress, Father Stretch. I'm the only person to come back to number one after cancellation. There is only one goat I stand by me. My friends call me yay. Correction, uh, Run DMC brought Adidas to the culture, but thank you. You can continue. Thank you, thank you very much. Right. I appreciate that. Uh, moving on, y'all. Nicki Minaj and her husband Kenneth Petty have been ordered by a Los Angeles judge to pay five hundred thousand dollars to a security guard over an alleged backstage assault in Germany. Now, the guard Thomas uh, accused Petty of ambushing him and breaking his jaw during a dispute at a twenty nineteen concert in Frankfurt. Thomas claimed that he was defending a female security guard who Minaj was berating. Uh, Despite attempts to serve Minaj and Petty with the lawsuit, they did not respond, leading to a default judgment. Thomas initially sought $721,000, but was awarded $503,318,000. Neither Minaj or Petty has commented on the ruling. 
Uh, moving on, Maxwell will launch the Serenade Tour this year. Okay, Maxwell, the 26-day trek will be supported by special guest Jasmine Sullivan and October London. That's going to be a good show. It kicks off se- September 14th at Hollywood, uh, the Hard Rock Live at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel uh, and Casino, and it wraps on October 27th at the Los Angeles Kia Forum. Tickets go oh, on sale Friday. Dope. Yes, it is at 10 a.m. local time on on muse.com and last but not speaking least of Maxwell, have you ever had his coffee yes good to the last drop yeah, yeah. <laughs> tiktok's pay <laughs> you get it TikTok's Maxwell house <laughs> last but not least y'all tiktok's parent company Byte Dance is paying influencers to push its other social media platform called Lemon 8. Uh, I guess it's kind of supposed to be like Lemonade. Uh, this comes after the Senate has begin has been considering to ban TikTok. Uh, the Chinese giant faces either being forced to uh, divest itself on tick of TikTok or have the app banned entirely if a bill passed by the House this month uh, is also passed by the Senate. Lemon Eight is an Instagram clone that features inspirational posts about food, beauty, wellness, and travel. All right, y'all, we're gonna wrap up the hot spot on that note. But coming up next, we got the praise mix down with the White Stone. The time now is 27 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show.